we had uh, copied, I mean, captured the introduction to health impact in our first module discussed, and we have uh, looked through this uh, webinar overview. Like I said earlier, we are going to be graduating from the simplest to the complex as regards the health impact assessment uh, context. So uh, we will go straight down to where we are supposed to capture for this module. But before we do that, uh, we spoke earlier about uh, the factors that could, um, we spoke earlier about uh, characteristics of, uh, uh, to, that defines health impact assessment. And I mentioned that uh, it helps in the predicting the consequences of related uh, project actions even before they occur. And it provides information decision makers prioritize uh, prevention and control strategies, if you recall in our last model. Okay, so we also captured the HIA functions in the last module, and we talked about the seven functions of HIA, if you recall. I will uh, advise that you uh, take a look at the previous models so that we can be on the same page. Okay, so we are looking this time around at uh, the HIA process. We are looking in in depth, uh, looking I mean in depth study on the screening process. Even though it's not that in depth, because we are still going to capture, um, we are still going to take some hypothetical case and deal with each process, as you can see highlighted here. We are still going to deal with each process, but this particular model is summarizing um, the different processes and uh, giving uh, background information for us to understand so that later on we can deal with the uh, major aspects and bring a case study, you know, a practical case study, deal with it for our understanding. So the essential elements of health impact assessment uh, typically includes the screening scoping risk assessment, health action plan, which we call HAP, implementation and monitoring, evaluation and verification, and then the participatory process. So as the name implementing means to screen, it means, you know, it's a preliminary evaluation to determine whether a proposed project likely going to pose uh, any significant, uh, significant health uh, impact, or maybe there are major health questions surrounding the project. So this uh, screening phase is to do a general uh, check, you know, hypothetically or desktop checks to say, oh, this project is likely going to, like I normally make use of the sector as an example, let's say the stone quarry, granite quarry, you know, if it's a granite quarry, I can tell from looking at the project description or looking at the engineering design or the project activities, you can screen and say, oh, X, Y, Z is going to be the possible, imp a possible, possible impact, more of a preliminary evaluation before anything gets started. So specialists usually will generally assume that projects uh, requiring environmental or social impact assessment are also likely to have potential health. So during the screening step, the need for an HIA can be determined. And don't forget, we're using the IFC handout for uh, this webinar. You can send an email and request for the handout so that you two can be on the same page with us. And also send your email address to us if you want us to add you to our list so that you can come live. You can come live uh, when we are streaming our webinar so that you can ask your questions live and we give live answers to your questions. We normally do not record the question and answer session, but just the uh, module itself, which lasts between five to 20 minutes or more sometimes. So uh, please just add your email address down the comment box so that we can always send you email alerts to know that we are coming uh, maybe a day before the webinar starts and 30 minutes before the webinar, you get to be reminded to join us. In any case, we can take on it during the webinar and do some talking around it and maybe profile some recommendation, okay? So that's by the way. So we go to number two, which is scoping. A scope, you know what to scope means, to develop a scope of work for something. So it's simply a process for um, applying the range and types of hazards 
and beneficial impacts that a project can have, the overall types and categories of questions that should be addressed during the study, during the health impact assessment study, are defined at this stage of the HIA. You know, the impact of key stakeholders and the relevant host country health authorities is critical so that the HIA adequately addresses a realistic range of health concerns. This stage also is the time to develop the terms of reference, the terms of reference for the study. The HIA effort should be fit to purpose and it should adequately and realistically match the complexity of the project during the scoping exercise. This is uh, basically how we look at it. So the risk assessment stage includes the key set of activities to investigate or to do an appraisal or to uh, do some qualitative and quantitative ranking of the impacts of the project. You know, the impact of the project, the health impact, don't forget we're talking about health, that the project is likely going to have is quantitatively and quantitative, uh, qualitatively ranked, you know, on the, uh, the impact on the health of the communities. So the spectrum of potential impacts, their relative importance and at what level they are expected to occur is determined in the risk assessment step. So the HAP step, which is the health action plan, just simply considers the rankings developed in the risk assessment and develops a written health action plan, HAP. So the HAP, also known as uh, health management plan sometimes, HMP, you know, depending on the context, it establishes uh, basically the proposed action needed to mitigate all the health impacts that have been identified during the risk assessment and to promote how to reduce or remedy it to compensate for the risk that the project is uh, going to have that is associated with the project. So health action plan potentially uh, 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 looks at the negative impact, review it, analyze it and prefer mitigation measures. Analysis by key stakeholders, including the, the host uh, communities, the health authorities, is actually very, very critical to be captured at this, uh, in this document, health action plan or health management plan, as the case may be. So implementation and monitoring occurs after the health action plan is developed. At this point, it is necessary to decide how the mitigation actions will be implemented and monitored, and to establish the roles and responsibilities of the company or the project uh, or the, the, the borrower, if it's a, a World Bank, uh, HIA, you know, depending or the financier, you know, will decide, I mean, it may be a financier that is requesting that an HIA to be done or is part of a requirement for it to be done. So it's the role and the responsibility of the company and the key stakeholders to implement and monitor the impact and mitigation measures that have been identified and that have been documented in the health action plan. So during this process, the project should establish action, action frameworks and allocation of resources, because without resources allocation, uh, whatever plan has been put in place is very far from being implemented. And it should design monitoring systems to ensure that mitigation progress is satisfactory on what is satisfactory satisfactorily done in addition the monetary system should be designed to capture uh, unanticipated effects or provide an early warning system to alert that problems you know uh, that, that problems are occurring at the community level the monitoring plan should find appropriate key performance indicators so the evaluation and verification of performance and effectiveness uh, is a system for determining that imp implementation has been accomplished and is achieved due to the standard that, that has been documented. And it has achieved also the intended results. Like you can see on this chart, uh, uh, you can see the tips and flow of conducting an HIA, you know. So the participatory process is uh, just capturing the, the stakeholders' uh, communication and consultation that have been done. And it should continue throughout the project life cycle, including during implementation and during evaluation. 
So the stakeholders uh, are very key and should be involved in decision making uh, because those at stake wants to know how their stake is being taken care of. A well-designed program creates a sense of ownership by the communities, by the impacted persons, by the interested persons, by the affected persons. Okay, so the overall HIA results and recommendations should be made known to stakeholders. You can refer to the stakeholders. Um, you can refer to the stakeholders um, training. I mean, a webinar that was uh, uh, put up so that you can you can probably catch one or two things about the approach. Okay, so we move forward very quickly. There are two types of aids: the comprehensive. HIA and the rapid appraisal HIA sometimes is, is RHIA, small r, HIA. Okay, so when gathering new field data for the HIA, the projects uh, will encounter different levels of effort and needs. That is why the categorization is being done. So the key descriptive terms is, uh, cases uh, are comprehensive and or rapid uh, appraisal. So it, it indicates the different depths of analysis and consultation that is required and whether the performance of the HIA involves collecting new field data. In many situations, a rapid HIA will be sufficient, but it will re require uh, collecting field data. However, the, this assessment may uncover significant data gaps and trigger the need for a more comprehensive HIA. So when a rapid HIA has been done, you may discover along the line that a comprehensive HIA is required and there will be changes in the planning. So let's take on comprehensive HIA. It includes screening, scoping, stakeholder consultation, like we looked, we, we checked earlier, risk assessments, appraisal, implementation, and monitoring and verification, like we saw in the previous slide. So stakeholder communication and uh, consultation should take place at all stages for a comprehensive HIA, from screening through implementation and monitoring. During the project concepts and pre-feasibility and feasibility studies and project planning phases, the project will perform, uh, uh, will have to perform uh, engagements and ensure that uh, the stakeholders are carried along all the way, most especially the local community are carried along all the way during the comprehensive because it's more likely to be considered for large uh, complex projects, particularly if the is uh, captured like we took in the first uh, in module 2B for HIA, when there's resettlement or relocation of existing communities or there is significant influx of persons, regardless of whether it's a new project or a new location situation or whatever situation it is. It is essential to take a look if a comprehensive HIA should be considered for such. An essential element of the comprehensive HIA is the need for some type of new data collection in potential affected communities and for helping to predict the changes in the health determinants as may be associated with the project and also the associated risks and health outcomes you know, due to the project have to uh, be communicated with appropriate data collected. So this data collection consists of uh, questionnaire surveys, even though we would take on the methodology for data collection, but questionnaire surveys are most appropriate for it. So rapid HIA is, uh, uh, we've taken the, I mean, comprehensive HIA. So going forward to rapid HIA, is the assessment, uh, uh, these assessments that go with rapid HIA, RHIA, are assessments that require less intensive efforts, like I said in the introduction. You know, however, investigation may be triggered in the process, like I mentioned. So typically, rapid HIA are subdivided into desktop and uh, limited in country HIA. Some HIAs can be connect country HIAs. So, in this case, for rapid HIA, it could be these two categories. So uh, A, is a, A, which is desktop HIA, is a qualitative review of potential health impact and is used to internally inform and comment on the proposed design of a project. It is also useful for determining whether a more detailed review is needed. 
the outcome of the DEX HIA may be the definition of scope for the HIA or even is uh, required further, it may require further assessment of health impacts as, as, as may be necessary. So A uses information that is already available or easily accessible, like you can see being desktop HIA. You know, thus no specific new data collection is required in this category. So data sources may include peer-reviewed scientific literature, external stakeholders, you know, secondary data, you know, from health department or from the statistics uh, bureau and so on, which are usually planned context of other and environmental assessment efforts. Also, uh, can provide useful it can provide useful health-related information. The overall results are typically incorporated into social and environmental impact assessments. Although the uh, limited in country HIA may also be issued as a standalone report in some cases. So HIAs are appropriate for many expansion scenarios where new data collection is not needed. It's not needed. In some situations, large health databases are available. So you wouldn't have to go further to, uh, to the field to capture data when it is not required. So for this batch, thank you for and uh, you can send me a personalized email at uh, comfort at richflood.com. Comfort at richflood.com. I'll be very glad to read from you. Thank you very much. And don't forget to subscribe to our uh, channel and put your email address there so that we can add you to our mailing list whenever. After now, I'm going to take on the questions. And uh, I can see there are about